step side models have a wheelhouse liner above the rear wheel and axle. Here the liner is being installed. Again, note that the installer is working in a shallow pit for optimum ergonomic benefit. Now before the tail lights can be installed, the mounting bracket for the tailgate must be attached. In addition to the tail lights, we also connect the trailer wiring harness at this station. You may recall that all body parts are painted at one time, then separated and sent to different areas of the plant on an electrified monorail system for finishing. Now everything comes together as we approach final assembly. The hood is installed. The tailgate is added. The front bumper is attached. Body side moldings are applied. And the grill and the closeout panel complete the body. Tire mounting and inflation is a fascinating operation. Tires are automatically mounted to the selected rims and then inflated. Inflation is actually done by adding air around the rim instead of through a stem and valve for improved speed and efficiency. In our sequence, you see four matching rims for the truck plus a standard steel rim that is the spare tire. Remember, all full-size pickups come with a full-size spare tire. The plant unloads 13 transport truck loads of tires per day. With a daily production rate of 1,300 trucks and five tires per truck, daily usage totals 6,500 tires per day. Now we can understand the need for automation. Wheels and tires arrive at the assembly line from the tire room. Here we see a spare tire being installed. For the regular wheels, the tire installer starts three nuts when mounting the wheels. The next operator adds the remaining three and torques them down according to specifications using a multi-gun. Torque is monitored to ensure proper installation. A green light indicates that everything is okay, red is under torque, and yellow is over torque. This is truck unload. The truck is removed from the chassis AGV. This is where the rubber meets the road for the very first time. But trucks can't run without fuel. At fuel fill, approximately 19 liters are added to the tank. And as you can see, the filling is done automatically. As we approach the end of the assembly process, quality checks begin. This operator scans the barcode that is entered into the computer. She checks the gas cap installation and ensures that the wheel nuts are the correct match for the wheel rim. Nine similar stations are found as we come to final assembly. Any defects or repairs are entered into the computer through a touch screen. This information allows statistical analysis of the manufacturing process on a daily, shift, or weekly basis. At startup and test, 193 line items are checked. Everything from air conditioning to turn signals to brakes and airbag systems are covered. A computer is plugged into the vehicle computer circuits and all results are recorded for analysis. The inspector follows the sequence of checks as directed by the computer. Apply the brakes, apply the turn signals, honk the horn, etc. After initial startup, the transmission fluid is topped up. The vehicle is then driven off the end of the line, but that's not the end of our evaluation. Headlight aim is checked while robots check the wheel alignment and tow in. We've now arrived at the roll test. The driver passes the vehicle identification card under the scanner recording all vehicle options. A computer monitor then comes across to the operator. Floor-mounted rollers take the vehicle up to 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. Checking functions such as the upshift and the downshift of the automatic transmission, the anti-lock brakes, and the four-wheel drive system. It also looks for drag on the wheels. All vehicles must go through this test. The steel bars you see are required to ensure the truck does not leave the rollers while being tested. After this, our truck heads for the care line where inspectors check for fit and finish. Once past this final examination, it's out the door and on its way to a GM dealership for delivery to a lucky customer. Quality product is not achieved by accident. Constant checking and verification of materials as well as process is critical. At General Motors, product evaluation and testing is a daily activity. A number of examiners spend their days making sure that only the best product leaves the plant. Today we're following Gene Deneen as he performs a complete vehicle audit and road test. Once the vehicle has been selected, it's brought into the inspection area. 
All pertinent information about the truck, such as the make, model, trim, axle, and vehicle identification number, is recorded into a handheld computer. As he conducts the inspection, any discrepancies will be entered into this unit. All records will be transferred to the main plant computer at the conclusion of the evaluation. Inspection begins with the engine compartment, where all fluid levels, hoses, connections, and fittings are checked. At the same time, inspectors look for any stress on wires or hoses, plus they look for fluid leaks. From here, we move to the cab. The inspector checks all operating parts for correct function, items such as lights, the turn signals, warning chimes, seat belt attachments, the horn, the radio, sun visors, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning controls, mirrors, as well as the shift lever. Seat movement, both front and rear, the recline function, the grab handles, window openings, door locks, and latches are all examined. Outside, body fit and side moldings are inspected. A special gauge is used to determine consistency in body panel gaps. At the same time, inspectors examine the paint and metal finish for flaws. Variances are recorded in the handheld computer. At the rear, tail light installation and proper attachment of the tailgate is examined. Even the key lock for the spare tire is checked. Once a thorough examination of the interior of the cab and the vehicle exterior is complete, the truck is placed on a hoist for an under-vehicle evaluation. Tires, wheel nuts, suspension, exhaust attachments, and more are all reviewed for proper assembly. The inspector also notes any fluid leaks or spills. When the detailed shop inspection is complete, the truck is taken for an on-road evaluation. The first stop is the squeak and rattle track, which comprises of a series of bumps designed to expose any defects. The truck is taken over the track in both forward and reverse gears. Should problems be detected, the vehicle will be turned over to the squeak and rattle department to determine both the cause and the fix. Steering is initially checked through a series of figure eight moves. On the road, the inspector checks the tow haul mode for correct operation, and at the same time, the cruise control is put through its paces. The truck is driven approximately five miles as a warm-up for both the engine and transmission. The radio is checked for static on both the AM and FM bands, and the windshield washer system is tested. While at highway speeds, the inspector also listens for any unusual wind rush or noise. Once the warm-up is complete, the powertrain evaluation starts. First up is a quarter throttle acceleration to check upshifts of the transmission. A slight grade is used to check proper function of the parking brake. Then it's on to the half throttle. And finally, a full throttle performance test. The transmission is allowed to coast down to allow the inspector to check for proper shifting. The park call function is very important. This test is conducted in both reverse and forward gears. With the truck moving at about six miles per hour, the transmission is shifted into park. The park call should engage and stop the vehicle. Steering wheel movement is checked for the stop to stop maneuver. Brake testing is accomplished through a panic stop from a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Here, the driver is checking for any pulling action. The truck is then taken up to about 30 miles per hour or 42 kilometers per hour to check for upshifts and downshifts from third to first and back again. The complete round trip test covers 19 to 21 miles. The course was designed to allow the truck to be driven in four different directions. This is necessary to determine the effect of wind rush or noise on passenger comfort. The course also requires an equal number of left and right hand turns, simulating real world usage. Once back at the plant, the truck will be subjected to an eight minute water test in order to evaluate seals. Again, any discrepancies will be recorded in the handheld computers. Only after all of these tests and any required repairs are completed will the truck be released for delivery. So the next time you see a truck which has gone through an individual inspection and road test, smile, knowing that this vehicle meets the standard set by Colonel Sam McLaughlin so many years ago, one grade only, and that's the best.